York. And now, from the pulpit of the Greater Allen Cathedral of New York, the Reverend Dr. Floyd H. Flint, on your praise and inspiration station, 1190 WLIB. from the sermon topic, I'm being shaped by the Spirit. Amen. Church, I think we would all agree that this nation is in the midst of some trying times. We are experiencing some difficult and dangerous situations. To make it perfectly clear that we need to collectively and individually continue to pray for divine intervention in this land. Yes, we need God to move from the halls of the government to the racist and bigoted spirits that are actively and willfully devaluing and destroying lives of the people of color that God has put here. Uh, we need God to move, and as much as we need God to move, on our behalf, we are all so clear that we need God to continue to move in us because in addition to our fighting our own personal situation, we are yet fighting the demons of injustice that are so deeply ingrained in the moral and economic fabric of this nation. I need the church to say amen. One of the saddest truths of, that is being displayed every day in this nation is that we have a president and millions of his followers who are absolutely committed to systemic and structural racism and human devaluation. 45 is the embodiment of hatred that runs rampant in this nation. And many like him exude a disregard for people of color to the degree that they have made it necessary for us to declare Black Lives Matter. We have to say it. You see, because America has told us in practice and policy that only white lives matter. From the time that we were brought to the shores of America, we have seen behavior and heard venomous words that assert that anyone who is non-white is inferior, is, dis is dispensable, and they are prime candidates for mistreatment and murder. We are people who have experienced the degradation of a brutal slaveocracy. We have experienced inhumane beatings, barbaric lynchings, unjust imprisonment, police and civilian viciousness, over-sentencing of our men and our boys, economic deprivation, and all of this has continued to happen, uh, making it apparent that this nation is declaring that black life is insignificant to them. Oh, but as the people of God, people who know God and who have experienced the truth of God. We have decided that we can shape our own narrative and we will declare that no matter what they do to us, no matter what they say to us, say about us, we know that we have been made in the image of God and that our lives do matter. You are the same man. See, our thinking will not be shaped in this season by those who hate us or by those who aim to control or chokehold us just to feel a sick and hate-filled need to destroy us. We know who our enemies are. We know that there are those who mean us no good. We know that we have to think for ourselves. We are at a place where we understand that we have to think beyond the lies, the political rhetoric, and the day-to-day -day social injustice that we consistently experience in this nation. And we have to stand up in the reality that we are the sons and the daughters of the Most High God, and our thinking, our actions, and our language will be shaped 
by the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ and not the venom that comes from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We will not uh, give up in the face of COVID-19. We will not give up in the ever-present vestiges of racism because we have a divine nature in us. We have the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit has given us a glorious treasure that makes us resilient and strong. And so we will continue to fight. We will continue to thrive because we have a sustaining and truth-based power that makes us know that God's hand is on us in spite of everything we are dealing with in this season. We have an endurance given to us by the God that has declared that his children will defy the odds. So in this hour of history, I suggest to America, I declare to black America and all people of color that the power of God will be manifested in us in this season as never before. We've just got to stand up in the reality of who we are and we must allow ourselves to be vessels of power. In this text that we read this morning, Paul reminds the believer that we are not ordinary people to the degree that God has given us something that makes us inextricably alive to the miracles and the creativity of God. Paul's message to the believer is that we are never forsaken and that we have to know that when we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our spirit, the power of Christ's life is manifested in us as never before. The text tells us that we may be hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. We may be perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. As I look at this text, there are many messages embedded here, but I believe that the word of the Lord to us in this hour is that we as believers have to be intentional to embrace the totality of who we are, what we have going for us, and we have to know how to handle our God-given reality. First, my brothers and sisters, we have the power to resist, to resist the enemy of our soul, to resist feelings that are negative. Paul says it: we are hard friends on every side, but we are not crushed. And I believe that what Paul is reminding us is that in this season, every believer must work at not giving in to our enemy, Satan. Uh, uh, we cannot give him any ground in our lives. We, we must ascertain how he works, that we must always be on our guard. We have to uh, resist his lies. We have to resist the pressure that he puts on us to squeeze the life out of us. Oh, we've got to know that uh, the enemy and his imps are all around us and the aim is to crush us. And while we would assert that white supremacists and racist police officers and corrupt judges are our enemies, I will remind you that Paul says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood specifically, but against racist spirits that have controlled this land for centuries. And so I need you to know today that we are in warfare and we assuredly must resist the tendency to be a victim to the schemes of Satan. No, we are better than that. We are stronger than that. We are spiritually attuned to the reality that Satan uh, may have captured and controlled the minds of millions, but there are some people who are in the body 
give Christ and we will not allow him to control our minds. No, our minds are being shaped by the Holy Spirit. Our lives, our thinking, and our fight are being shaped by the knowledge that we have a power that comes from God. We will not be crushed in this season because God's hand is on us. Our humanity is strengthened by God's divinity. And no matter what they do, what they say, we are not crushed internally. But know that, no, we stand up strong and we proclaim greater is he who is in me than he or she who's in the world. And I resist, I reject every lie that says otherwise. We have the power to resist. And not only does God give us the capability to resist, we also have what God uh, 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 puts in, the, uh, uh, we also see what God puts in us. And we know that we have the power to reorient. See, we are perplexed but we will not give in to despair because we have to take a step back and just remember who God is and who we are. We are perplexed, or one would say we are stressed, but we will not be stressed out. And we're not stressed out because we have the ability through the Holy Spirit not to fall apart when other things fall apart. We will not allow ourselves to get nervous or panicky uh, in the wake of trouble, but rather we will take control of our minds and we will reorient. What does that mean? We will adjust our focus. We will reacquaint ourselves with reality. We will establish what our real priorities are. We will not allow others to steal the knowledge of where we are going in God. John 10 and 10, Jesus declares that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that means, church, that he wants to steal our minds, and he wants to steal our relationship with God. The thief's hope is that we will not understand who he is, and that we will not see him for who uh, 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 he wants us to become. And he feels that if we are ignorant of his scheme, then he can work his program and shape our lives. The aim of the enemy is that we would allow him to steal our present reality and steal our future. Yes, we've been dealing with a lot, COVID-19 and the murders of Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Rashad Brooks, knowing that there are yet bloodthirsty officers and DAs who would make sport of us by oppressing us. And, 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 and that's enough to make us move to places of despondency, depression, and disorientation. It's enough to make us question why God is letting this stuff happen. But I've come to say that every now and then, we have to just look and see what's going on. And we have to shift our vision from the things of the world uh, to the reality of who God is. We have to read our word. We have to go into deep prayer. And we have to remember that God is yet the hope on which we stand. We have to purpose that Satan will not capture our souls. Uh, uh, the soul is made up of the mind and the will and the emotions. And so we need to keep our minds stayed on the Lord so that we can keep our spiritual selves aligned with the will of God. And so that our emotions will be cleansed to the degree that we are not controlled by the ungod, but we are controlled by the spirit. We will not allow lies to infiltrate our mind and our will. And we will be able to determine 
that we see what we see, but we know who God is, and we reorient, and we declare that I've got perfect peace because my mind is stayed on the Lord. I've got perfect peace because I know that the more I open myself up to God, the less power the enemy will have in my life. Ah, uh, I step back and I declare to myself that I will not be in despair because I know this situation is not hopeless. God has done it before. God will do it again. And so I reorient and I reevaluate what I am, what I'm going through, and know that God is still on the throne. We resist and we reorient. We're persecuted, but we're not abandoned. That means that we are always at the place where we must reclaim what God has given us. We resist, we reorient, and we reclaim. We reclaim our truth. We reclaim our authority in God. We, pro we reclaim our position in the kingdom. As believers, we surely know persecution. So many of our men and women have experienced stop and frisk and unfair treatment in the court. Blacks are still the brunt of harsh jokes and stereotypes and threats. But the word of the Lord to us this morning is that we are not abandoned. And we need to reclaim the words of Christ where he says in Matthew 28 and 23, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. God is with us. And we must reclaim the treasure of the Holy Spirit that leads us and fills us in spite of what humanity does to us and Satan tries to do in us, we proclaim today that our God is great and that the God who began a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. And so today, we reclaim the knowledge of our position in God as the royal priesthood. We reclaim that reality and declare that we will not allow anyone to control us. They won't control how we think. They cannot control what we say, how we act, because even though life does not always make sense, life does not always feel fair, we've got the right perspective, we've got the right attitude, our feelings will not be shaped by what we see, but our feelings will be shaped by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is with us shaping not only our thinking, but shaping our relationships, shaping our ministry, shaping all of our actions. We have the ever abiding presence of God and we've got to reclaim that knowledge and we've got to declare that we are going to walk in that authority. We have been set apart. God's hand is on me and I won't forget it. We must resist. We must reorient and we must reclaim our position in God. And then Paul goes on to say we are struck down but not destroyed. My brothers and sisters, no matter what, we must understand that we have the power to rebound from the hit and the blow that are designed to take us out. We have a treasure in us that comes from God. Oh yes, life will knock us for a loop, but we have a power that keeps us going. We take a licking, but we can keep on ticking because we have a treasure in us that is greater than discouragement, 
stronger than fear, tougher than put down, superior to acts of racism and bigoted tweets. We have something in us that is uh, more powerful than our emotional lows. We've got to understand that God is calling us, hallelujah, to this place of, 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 of rebounding everything the devil tries to do to us. He cannot destroy us because God has already declared that we have resurrection power. Lord knows that the Lord is keeping us. I thank God for it. God is strengthening us. When I look at our parents and our grandparents, when I see senior citizens and those all around, I see God's hand keeping us, not allowing trouble to destroy us. Oh, and we need to give God praise today that even though we are in the midst of being hampered by, hammered by the fiery darts of hell, they cannot penetrate us, they cannot destroy us, they should not infiltrate our character because we know that God is ever present and God is telling us that we can be knocked down, but he'll pick us back up again and he will send us to places of victory. Oh, put your hands together and thank God that God has not left us alone. Put your hands together and declare to yourself that God is taking care of me. I am secure in my salvation. I know who I am in Christ. I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and I'm being kept by the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, church, but I'm happy today because I have a treasure from the Lord. And that treasure makes me a walking, talking, living, breathing, shouting miracle. I could have lost my mind a long time ago, but I have a treasure in earthen vessels. I would have given up some years ago, but I'm here today because I have a treasure in earthen vessels. Friends talked about me. Enemies tried to destroy me. Oh, but I'm still standing because I have a treasure in jars of clay and earthen vessels. And because uh, I have a relationship with Almighty God, uh, whenever trouble comes, uh, I cast my cares upon Him because I know He cares for me. And thank you, Jesus, uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost, I have been able to demolish arguments uh, and anything that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. I've got a treasure in earth and vessels that allows me to take captive every thought and make it obedient to the word of the Lord. I'm happy today because I know this one thing. I can't stop Satan from attacking me But I can't stop him from making me act uh, as if God is not alive. I'm happy today that I have the power through the Holy Ghost to evict Satan from my heart and from my mind. He will not have access to my power. I have an unwavering, unrelenting, God! 
the Reverend Dr. Floyd H. Flake of the Greater Allen Cathedral of New York on your praise and inspiration station, 1190 WLIV. If you are struggling with an alcohol or drug addiction, summer is a perfect